In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the performance tweaks needed for the GPD-1.3. Now, the GPD-1.3 is a fine device, but it does require a few uh, tweaks. Tinkering is part of the handheld Windows gaming experience. Uh, these devices don't work perfectly out of the box, especially the Intel ones, because Intel has many, many issues. Um, to get the best experience, what you want to do is do some tinkering to get good battery life and good performance in certain games. So you'll need a couple of things. Um, the first and the most essential tool you require is uh, Cifre's TDP setup. Now Cifre's bat file, which I'll, send, I'll put a link to uh, below, is something that lets you tweak the wattage of your uh, GPD Win 3 device. Uh, by wattage I mean the amount of power your device uses. By default the Win 3 comes with a 20 watt uh, starting cap on their uh, power wattage and this basically tells the device how much power it should use uh, at a given time, up to how much power it should use at a given time. Now Windows games aren't actually designed with um, this in mind or the drivers aren't actually, the Intel drivers aren't actually designed with this in mind. So a lot of games are going to eat up a lot of power they don't need. So what you want to do is once you download Cifre's uh, TDP file, you'll get an option. I'll just show you that again here. Oh, let me, okay, there we go. So it'll say something along the lines of TDP UV menu fast. After you've installed it, you'll get this and it has to be run in admin right so what we're going to do is we're going to click here and it's going to give you a whole bunch of options now these options uh, there's a lot of them the main one that you will be using uh, is the wattage options you can see it has a whole bunch of lists from 25 watts to 35 you can even set your custom wattage now most games usually run great between 16 to 17 uh, between I would say 14 to 17 watts and this gives you a very decent amount of battery life around 2 hours and 34 minutes depending on what you're doing I wouldn't really recommend using 35 watts unless you're going to be using emulators something like a Simu or a PlayStation 3 for the most part you should be good with around 14 to 17 watts if you want to play games at 25 baseline to 30 on the high side 30 FPS uh, for handheld games. Uh, I don't recommend playing games at 60 FPS on this device. You can, but your battery life is just going to die. So you're better off playing somewhere around 25 to 30 with most modern in, modern games at 720p. It, it runs perfectly with motion blur. So uh, as a test, uh, I'm going to choose, let's say I choose uh, 16 watts. So I'm going to press C. Alright, you hear that sound? So now I'm set at 16 watts and I'm going to show you a demonstration of how it affects the game. So here I have uh, Fallout 4 running. Let me lower the volume a bit. So it runs at 60 FPS at around 14 watts and we've capped our device to 16 watts if you can see right up there. So this way it's not going to get uh, hot you see your, temp your temperature is at 51 degrees Celsius and it's using around 11 to 4 40 watts uh, with a little bit of dips in frame rate so this is the general experience you'd get at that wattage but you'll get like battery life around 1 hour and 60 minutes or so and you can up it more than this so what you want to do is let's pause the game right here and all tab out go back to surface folder and let's get back in here so keep in mind you gotta run this uh, with admin rights otherwise it's not going to work well so now let's try something higher let's just go let's say we go to around 35 watts so we press P wait for the confirmation and let's all tab back in and here we are hitting all the way 60 so because vsync is on I think it caps at around 60 um, because this is Fallout 4 you're still gonna get some amount of uh, 
dips in frame rate but for the most part it's at a stable 60 for the most part and it's running at 35 watts capped but it's only using 20 so that's the max about what this uh, game requires so it's gonna use only that much at 20 watts you'd probably get around an hour and 20 minutes of gaming maybe a bit less um, I wouldn't actually play this game this way I would, I would rather play it at like 25 or 30 watts at about 11 uh, 20, 25 to 30 FPS at about 11 watts so that's going to give me about 2 hours uh, 34 minutes of gaming um, if I j decide to play it handle and it, it runs very, very well so uh, let's go exit this now so another tool you require is um, it's called IGCIT helper or IGCIT driver switch. So what this tool allows you to do is it allows you to switch Intel drivers on the fly. And this tool is very, very important. You must have this tool if you plan on uh, using this device for modern games because uh, Intel breaks their drivers quite a bit. Uh, they're still not there yet with Intel XC, so you might have to switch drivers. Uh, for example, uh, Doom Eternal doesn't work well with the latest driver, and you probably need something like 9313 to run it. So, it's it's a very simple tool. Uh, I, I believe this is also made by Cifray. So, once you click on this tool, what it will say, I don't think you can read it. So it will say found driver version 9616, so that's the previous driver uh, that I had. And the way you get drivers working on this is all you need to do is there's a folder called Intel Drivers. Uh, what you need to do is put the zip file. I don't know why I have this file over here. You, you, you don't need this one. You just need to put the zip file in this folder. So all the drivers, you just put this in this folder and you can switch it on the fly and go back and forth to any driver you want. Uh, so if you wanted to play Cy Cyberpunk 2077, you probably want to use the 9616 driver, not the, wait, yeah. No, sorry, you probably want to use the older driver, which is, I don't know the version, but it's there. You don't want to use the latest one because Cyberpunk breaks on that. So this is another tool you require and you must have for playing games. And now let's go to the next bit. Um, if you go down here, ideally you want to keep this at best performance or better performance. You want to keep this at better performance if you're just playing PC games. So because it will switch back and forth with the power balance with regards to CPU and GPU. But if you play emulators, make sure you're always on best performance because emulators work differently in comparison to uh, PC games. They require the full power. Uh, PC games don't really require full CPU usage or full GPU. It, it varies dependent. So that's something you want to do. And now I'm going to go into the BIOS. Uh, this is something that most people will have to do. And the easy way to do this, because this keypad is not really good to get into the BIOS, the easiest way to do this, at least for me, is you go into settings, you go into updates and security, focus, focus, and you go to recovery, and under advanced startup, you click restart now. It's restarting. So once you're here, uh, you go to troubleshoot, advanced options, and UEFI firmware settings. Restart. So this uh, should take you right into the BIOS. Oh, there you go. So this is my BIOS. The keys do work over here. So the very first setting. Uh, this setting should be available to you. If it's not, you have to press Control H to open it up. Uh, but keep in mind that's at your own risk. If you hold Control H and open your BIOS, uh, resetting it would be a problem. If you don't know what you're doing, you might mess it up. So only do this if you know what you're doing. But for the most part, it's pretty safe. So when you when you click over here where it says Memory Frequency, by default, I think it's around three seven three three. 
So this is your RAM timing. Uh, because you're using an Intel GPU, an XE GPU, it's dependent on the RAM. The speed of the RAM affects your GPU processing power. So what you want to do is make sure you set it at 4267, which is the natural speed of this RAM. So there you go. You set it over there. And another thing you want to do is, for the most part, nominal is okay. Nominal means it'll give you a TDP of 20 to 25 watts. Oops. Sorry. As you can see, under nominal, it says 20 to 25 watts. Uh, under up, it says 25 to 28. So these are like default settings and changes RAM timings uh, put, on by GP, uh, put on by GPD. But you know, normally you don't need to change this unless you want your system to be a bit quieter. You can change this to quiet or normal. Uh, personally, I keep it at performance because I use this as a game, but you could keep it at normal and still get a decent amount of um, performance. Now you go to advanced. On the advanced tab, what you want to do here... Oh man, this autofocus is freaking terrible. You go down to thermal configuration. This is something you should do if you play emulators uh, because it throttles your CPU. So I've dis disabled it already by by default enable all thermal functions is enabled. What you want to do is disable it. Now the reason for this is I think, I'm not sure, but I think this was actually a BIOS setting made for ultrabooks which don't have fans or cooling systems. Since the GPD-13 already has a cooling system, you should keep this disabled. It disables everything including Intel Dynamic. And this way, your CPU won't get throttled when it hits like 60 or 70 degrees because the fan is very capable on the Win3. You shouldn't actually need this setting on. Um, it does affect emulators for sure. PC games, not so much. It might keep your system a little bit cooler, but the cooling system is just amazing uh, on the Win3, so I don't require it. So I keep it disabled, and I'd recommend keeping it disabled. So what you want to do after you're done... Um, save changes and exit and it might take a bit to uh, start up the settings and uh, you're good to go so those are the basic settings that you should uh, tinker with on your GPD Win 3 and this will give you the best best experience you know because if you want this as a portable not something you're going to keep it plugged in all the time uh, you got to do these settings for sure uh, another thing to note is uh, there is a reset button oh wait I don't know where that where is it it's on the right somewhere okay I believe this is the reset button over here it's either this one I think or this is the microphone jack oh one of these is the reset button y you can figure it out on the uh, forums or you know so if your device gets stuck I'm pretty sure this is not it Okay, if your device gets stuck, you have these two pinholes. Uh, just guess which one's the one of them is the microphone. Don't don't pierce that one. Just check it up. Whichever one, uh, the hole, the correct hole. Use a pin to pl uh, put a pin inside. Use the pin hole to put a pin inside, and it'll reset your device to factory settings and take you to BIOS and you know do all that good stuff, and your system will be fine. Uh, just take a look which one it is. I, I've not used it, so it's one of these. Um, other things to note, which I didn't cover on my review, because uh, I wasn't editing it right. I think I missed something over here. These two buttons are very useful. Uh, by default, I think this one or this this one is uh, put to Task Manager, so you can go to the GPD app, which is over here. It's it's called Win Controls. So it has back button customizations which you can click and it also has timings for the button. So mine is set to control zero second delay, alt delete zero second. So zero second means there's no delay. You're pressing it all together. So whenever I press this button over here, it goes to task manager which is really useful if you don't want to use the keyboard all the time. And this one I've set to Windows zero second tab which gives me the multitask uh, multi desktop key I try to usually keep two desktops open the reason being sometimes if your game gets stuck 
and you can't open task manager what you want to do is you want to click on your second desktop instead of your first desktop and then open task manager over there so you know your games run much better now there is one thing which I actually didn't plan on covering but I'll probably do it here um, if you go to system and advanced system settings you're going to be given this menu now <clears throat> because we're using Intel XE drivers uh, there are going to be times when your games are going to sometimes run out of memory or they're going to start stuttering and this does help in certain games not all of them so you can turn off automatic manage file uh, automatically manage paging file paging file is basically uh, giving your system more RAM. It's going to use the SSD as RAM. So the SSD is pretty fast so it can load up textures and you know some pre-baked effects and stuff. So you can actually set a different amount of RAM by clicking the set key. I'll have to turn it off and click set. So depending on your needs you can set it to like 4 GB, 8 GB, um, anything above 2 GB you can set it up by default it, the system manages it just fine but in case you have issues this is something you might want to look into and I think I've covered pretty much everything there's one more setting which I'm not going to cover because it's going to create problems for people who are uh, not like enthusiast users it mainly has to do with power settings because when you go to power options over here um, for most people, you go here, these are all the settings you're going to see. But if you turn off something called modern standby, you'll get a whole bunch of settings that you can tweak and turn around. And it's also going to give you something known as S3 standby, which is standby that works uh, with the Win3 going into standby mode and the Wi-Fi still running it's different from hibernate so that's a, that's a setting that some people want some people don't want but I'm not gonna go into doing that because it involves editing your registry and it can screw up your system if you don't know what you're doing so but anyway if you want that you could turn off modern standby so this pretty much covers everything on the GPU N3 if the if you like the video go ahead and dislike it uh, if you dislike it go ahead and dislike it well, I don't really care. Thanks for watching.